I want to talk about your book. And I love your book because it addresses uh, an area of success that's needed, but it's not often talked about. It's not often um, put out there in a way that, that, you know, let me just give the title of the book, Loving in the Grown Zone. Yeah. Great title, by the way. Far too often, people have big dreams. They want to start businesses. They want to rise um, up in their careers. But their partner, they're just not on the same page. And you find yourself having to make a decision. You know, do I chase my life's destiny? Or, you know, the person who lays next to me every night, do I do what she or he wants me to do? Yeah, many of us How are sleeping. How does that book come to fruition for you? And just talk to me about relationships and business. Well, as I said earlier, my, my four passions are physical fitness, mental fitness and health, financial business and financial fitness and health, and relationship fitness and health. And whenever I mention that fourth one, most people are like, huh? Um, no one's more surprised than I am that my first book, written um, co-authored with my wife, Sarah Green, was focused on relationships. It's a great book. It could have been a startup book. It could have been all that stuff. But here's what I found out both from observation and from personal experience. When, usually when a business collapses for no apparent reason, when a career is derailed for no apparent reason, or a fortune is lost for no apparent reason, it has nothing to do with business, career, or financial decision making. It is almost always a relationship breakdown somewhere. Like you said, somebody chose to partner with the wrong person or someone, someone, or someone conducts their relationships in such a messy way that it undermines their ability to make money and build the business and focus on the business. Um, I have a, e a free ebook that I've been giving out for maybe two years. Uh, people that want to get it, if you go to grownzone.com forward slash buy love get trouble, you can download this free ebook. Um, and it's all about this focus. And in the book, I talk about two people that I know. I only mention one of them. This is one dude I know who's an entrepreneur who can't get his business to grow past a certain point but because, because between child support and a personal harassment settlement that he's making, he can't pour money into the business <laughs> the way he should because his finances are being drained because he thought he should be a player. He thought CEO meant, I gotta, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a player. And he didn't recognize how his relationship choices could undermine his financial and business capacity. So loving in the grown zone is a, is literally a, what we call a driver's manual. Um, and it's not just for entrepreneurs, but I push it on entrepreneurs and people want to be successful for people to understand that financial and business success is also tied to your relationship choices. And you you might want to compartmentalize and say, I'm going to be this way over here and be that way over here. But my thing is how many lessons we got to see, how many, how many times we got to see a politician have to resign his position. How many times you got to see a, corp, a CEO, you know, where, and this is even before the Me Too movement, have to leave his position because of some messiness? How many times? How many? How many times we got to see this in our face before we accept that the decisions you make that are technically private decisions behind closed doors has broad implications? Who you marry has broad implications. Who you procreate with has broad implications. Who you date has broad, broad, um, broad implications. Uh, procreation, cohabitation, and marriage are financial decisions. That's why you got to go to court to get out of a marriage. And I've been, I've been divorced twice, not to church. I don't care how glory and preaching and swearing on the Bible in the church when you get married, when it's time to get out of it, it's a business and financial contract. Marriage itself is a financial contract. It's a financial contract. You don't have to go to church to get married, but you got to go to the state house. You got to go to some government. You know what I'm saying? It's a financial contract. And mar a marriage license is the only contract we sign without negotiating the terms in advance. Whew. I, and I, I've done, I, I mean, I'm married three times, but I've done it twice. My current marriage was the first marriage where we thought about, okay, what do we want this marriage to look like? And how is it going to operate? So, so loving in the grown zone, I'm, I'm so glad that, that you gave me a chance to even talk about this. This is not how to get a man or how to get a woman or, you know, matchmaking and 
married at first sight and love. It's not any of that. It's like, okay, we all need love. We all want relationships. All that is healthy and good. Sex is the natural drive. All that is healthy and good. How do you approach your decision making in life in such a way that you can pursue those goals, relationships, love, and sex without destroying, in this case, your business or your career? And in most cases, literally your life. Um, so we told people you needed a driver's manual to learn how to drive safely. Loving in the grown zone is your lover's manual to learn how to love safely and to get what we all want. We want a safe, healthy, loving, stable relationship. Everybody wants that because it's just healthy for us. We don't want, if you come home at the end of the day, and we, this is actually mentioned in the book, we use this as a measure of whether you're in a healthy relationship or not. How do you feel if you're home at the end of the day and your partner comes home and you hear that doorknob turning or you hear the car pulling into the driveway? Are you happy or are you, are you anxious? Or the other Go way around? Ahead, Alfred. Go hey. ahead, Alfred. Tell you, I've been there. <laughs> like, how did, when you're coming home at the end of the day and the work, are you like, I can't wait to get home? Or are you like, man, I need to stop at the bar and get I a drink? I guarantee you so many people who are either going to listen to this in podcast form or who are going to be watching this video. When you said what you just said, hairs are going to stand up on them. Oh, Yeah. It's a reality check. Um, and, and, and I'll speak for myself, and this goes back to the business and professional part. There are some entrepreneurs and some hardworking professionals, they're, they're not putting in extra hours because they're workaholics. They're putting in extra hours because they're allergic to going home. <laughs> and work is a legitimate reason to not go home. You know, and again, I used to be one of those people. Now, I, you know, I love my work, so I don't want to be excited. But now I can look back and realize that when I was unhappy in my marriages, a good legitimate reason to not go home would be to say, let me just do this one more thing before I leave the office. Oh, we got to close the magazine. Let me, I mean, they could do it without me, but I'm the editor. I should stay with them. And, and so loving in the grown zone is about how do you navigate your way to relationships that you actually want to be in because they're good for you not have to be in because you need the, the devil income or you got kids or, or your church would frown on you if you divorced or all those other reasons why people get and stay married and, and are dysfunctional, unhealthy situations. And they think they're not paying a price, but to your point about entrepreneurship, you can't run and grow a successful business if you're not happy, if, you can't, if you're under stress and pressure and anxiety uh, another person that I know, I mean, we always never use names because some of these are our private clients. One of our private clients, a very successful um, financial manager, very successful. If I dropped her name, people in her state would know who she is. Could not grow her business because she, she was married to an a, a abusive husband that was so sure that she was cheating when she was going to meet her clients that she, he wouldn't let her go but so far away from their location to grow business. She couldn't grow a business until they got divorced. And she only got divorced because he nearly killed her. Wow. So people don't think about that. They, when we go to conferences and events, you know, we, we, we got our, we're suited and zooted and we got our designer suits and we got our nails done and hair did. And we present because we're presenting our business, presenting our brand. But some people are going home to hell. That's right. You know, this, this coronavirus, people are finding out, the, you know, <laughs> <laughs> some, some people are stuck at home and some of us are safe at home. <laughs>